Pep Talk UK, Pro Bees, representing North London, across the bridge, I was given permission to step inside South London by the gatekeeper of all gatekeepers. I ain't a gatekeeper no more, man. <laughs> I mean, South London, yeah. you spoke to Dean White. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah man, I'm, I'm old now, bro. <laughs> My days are done. <laughs> Hey, I'm delighted to be joined by a um, historian, the head of the MTK Global Foundation. Drum roll, please. Yeah, they're going to get it. Spencer Perron. Yeah, man. Always blessed to see yeah. you. Yeah, I mean, big up. Yeah, I mean, also got big up Blue Jays cap. Big up Dave, big up Joy. Yeah, I mean, everyone comes in. You see on the wall, everyone comes in here. Yeah, I mean. Stormzy, Heady One. Come on, man. Come on, man. There's everyone. If you go back to... Um, the old custodials of dance hall, Tipper Irie comes in there. That's big saxophone yeah. crew. Come on, man. Yeah. So yeah, that, that um, this place is a is is a, is a is a hub of the it's, it's a hub of the community where everyone, if you, like the guys who look the youngers who get the big buses now, ain't nothing. Like a lot of people get gas. Like if I come here, people go, oh, you know, the boxing dining. You know? So it's like yeah, but I'm looking at guys like. Who have gone, gone, like guys like Stormzy and that, and they still keep it authentic, they still keep it 100. That's why I've got love in my heart for them, you know? Yeah. So, as um, Snoop Dogg says, what's cracker lacking? What's what? the cracker lacking? Boy, same old, same old, man. I'm just, I'm, I'm excited. I just see like Eddie Hearn sent out a tweet about offering some seven figure to Andy Ruiz so to fight um, the body snatcher Dylan White. And Dylan White had to humble himself because we are. Uh, Last week on the Fighters Right with myself and Baba Tundi Ajayi, you know what I mean? We had the original body snatcher in Mike McCullum. And Mike McCullum was just dropping some pearls of wisdom. And uh, Dylan White gets his fight. Was like, Please God, I hope my fingers are crossed. This is going to be March or April? End of March, I believe. All right, end of March. I think March 28th was the date. 22nd or 28th? 28th, like. March 28th. Right, I'm so looking forward to that fight uh, because... Two things. If Dylan White can do a better job than what uh, Anthony Joshua did and properly beat up Andy Ruiz, then we got to put him in a reckoning to say that he should be Anthony Joshua's summer day in, in, in the UK. You know? You mentioned Anthony Joshua. I saw a tweet out there um, saying Dylan White believes Anthony Joshua's not the same fight, isn't as aggressive as once before. But yeah. could we call that just a fight evolving in a different style? I mean, no, I, he's not as aggressive, but I think what he is, he's more smart. Uh, because he knows, like, he, he tried the aggressive thing um, uh, in last year, June, and got caught with a sneaky left hook to the temple that messed up his equilibrium and, and, and gave him his first professional loss. So I think he's evolved as a fighter. You got to think. You went twelve. You in the twelve? No, the eleventh round he stops um, Klitschko, right? That was a hard fight. And as a fight since then, look at the performances that Andy Josh has had since. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, just look at his performances. Parker, Povetkin, Takam. Takam. Well, the Takam fight. When you say, well, he had a cold gun into the fight, got his nose broke, right? But they weren't the same Andy Joshua that we've seen, like Ram Roden guys, right? But obviously, as the, the the level of opposition starts to go up, he's got to start learning certain things because you got to think Andy Joshua has been railroaded into the position, right, to become a world champion when he picked up the IBF title, which was stripped from Tyson Fury. You know what I mean? Railroaded into all of these fights, like back to back to back. It's worked financially, but then he came a cropper uh, in the first fight against. Uh, uh, Andy Ruiz, which fair play to him, he didn't make no excuses, right? He's come back now and he's, he's, he's studying boxing. He's got guys around. I know, like, I talk to KD a lot, that's his main guy. We, we, we speak a lot. I send these guys constant videos what to be studying. Like, I'll send to any young fighter who wants to talk boxing to me. I'm, I'm open like that. I mean, I love to, 
to, to, to encourage, you know what I mean? Because encouragement gives confidence. So, when I see when people are talking about Andy Joshua and like, ah, oh, he's not the same fighter. Andy Joshua to me hasn't been the same fighter per se since the Klitschko fight, right? But it's because he realizes that, well, I'm, I want longevity in this sport. Uh, end of the day, it's called prize fighting. The prize is actually the financials and also the adulation that comes along with it. And he wants this to, to last as long as possible, right? And to create a legacy. I don't think before he was looking to create a legacy. I think he was looking to create a financial legacy. But after losing and coming back and then winning the title back twice, he's rolling with this. Yeah, I, I enjoy this. This is this is it. And I think that's been the difference. And I, and I like the fact that he's now surrounding himself with boxing people. Before he didn't have no boxing people. Now he's got boxing people around. They call they call it in the hood the re up. The yeah, re up. Yeah, yeah, and so he's had that, right? So it's it's uh, to me that's a good thing, man. It'd be so interesting if Dillian White and Anthony Joshua cross path once again. I mean, you remember that fight they had for the British title back then? Both fighters are completely different animals right now. This it's, is I'm being one hundred percent. I'm being one hundred percent, yeah. Dylan White has improved tenfold at a more quicker rate than what Andy Joshua has done within the time. Andy Joshua has accomplished a hell of a lot, but so has Dylan White. And I'm telling you that that's not no easy fight for either man. I'm telling you this now. Because what Dylan has become, he's become very, very clever. He's become like this, this, this wily, clever pro. And I know that Dylan White most will be studying uh, Larry Holmes, which I've said that he been studying, meaning he's spoken about this already. But I also know that, you know what I mean, last week, myself and Baba Tundi Ajayi spoke to Riddick Bo, the former undisputed heavyweight champion of the world, and the only man in boxing history to have held every conceivable major title in the heavyweight division. Nobody else has done it. Um, and he, he should be watching, uh, Dylan should be watching Riddick Bo. Riddick Bo had an incredible inside game really good inside game right and he would like the weight jerk back throw the, throw the right uppercut and dylan white does it but he doesn't throw it as crisp but he's learning to do so dylan white is a nightmare for anyone i'm telling you this now anybody anyone including andy ruiz jr if that offer seven figure offer gets accepted if it gets accepted it's not an easy fight because andy ruiz can actually box and but i just believe that dylan white would deal with andy ruiz there was talk of Andy Ruiz taking a year out, which... Take a year out for what? Enjoy, for what? En enjoy them 13 million M's. Well, listen, man, that, that million M's, that can run out, you know. <laughs> if, Tyson get, if Mike Tyson can get broke, anyone can get broke, you know. Just remember that. And he made 250 mil, so I'm not looking, don't... That, you, can, you can squander that. Yeah. Trust me. Speaking of Dillian White, um, obviously, there's the pursuit or Deontay Wilder, that's ongoing, 800 days in counting. Um, minutes and seconds, I couldn't tell you. Right, right. This but a, it goes on. It goes on. This is the game. Uh, it is becoming, I've never, I, I don't know, no other heavyweight that's waited that long. You mean, seriously, I don't know. We'd have to go back to what? Um, 1960, Sonny Liston, when he was pursuing to fight Floyd Patterson. But Floyd Patterson, and customer O were, were afraid of Sonny Liston, right? I don't think Deontay Wilder is actually afraid of Dylan White. I just think it's risk reward factor and Dylan is a risky fight for anybody and Dylan could potentially beat Deontay Wilder but Deontay Wilder could potentially knock out anyone because with that right hand, that guy, trust me, he's working with the team, bro. Dylan White mentioned that Deontay Wilder um, has in his possession um, the World Coward Championship. Which Leonard Ellaby called it. What did Leonard say? And Leonard's my friend. I love Leonard Ellaby. Trust me. And Leonard Ellaby announced me uh, in Las Vegas. Leonard Ellaby, for those you don't know, is, the, is uh, the, what's he, the manager of Floyd Mayweather. Um, and is, what's he, the CEO of Mayweather Promotions. Leonard Ellaby announced me to... The Vegas press says, like, as this historian and everybody else, and everyone's like, this guy, like, yeah. So I've got a lot of time for Leonard Ellaby. But Leonard Ellaby has to realise, Dylan White talking about Deontay Wilder getting knocked out and sparring twice by Klitschko. You know what I mean? Um, Vladimir Klitschko. 
is their rivals. So you're going to do anything to be the upper hand or to say anything against someone. You're going to say it because they're rivals. I don't particularly like you, and I was there when you got knocked out. That's, you know what I mean? So therefore, I'm, I'm, I'm running that one on you. To me, that doesn't mean anything. You know what I mean? Sparring, sparring. Don't mean nothing. But then the enemy said it was some, some su a sucker move or something like yeah, that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that's what he said. I mean, that's what Lennon said. But you know what? He's entitled to his opinion. Lennon's my guy still, but you know, spine, spine. I use the I use the analysis of Kit Coco was a was a studiously avoided world tour middleweight back in the day. Yeah. Uh, allegedly knocked out Sugar Robinson in his spine. If I didn't mention Kikoku to you, part of the murder of draw, right? You wouldn't even know who he is. You little young cats, you wouldn't even know. <laughs> so what? But you know who Sugar Robinson is? Barely, because I know he's a lot of these little young kids don't even study this game no more, right? Uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, prior to fighting Marvin Hagler, uh, got beat up. Uh, by Phillips uh, in, in sparring so bad that the beating like when they got on the bus to go back to, to the hotel it, it was silence on the bus Do you get what I'm trying to say to you? so what? and then when Sugar Leonard made his, was preparing to make his comeback against Hector Camacho he got knocked down in sparring by an 18 year old kid so what? allegedly Right? And Lennox Lewis tweeted back to his fake news, but I'm just saying, Lennox Lewis got knocked down in Spine. I think it's either Ever, was it Ever Martin or Ever Daniels or Ross Purity? One of the two, because it was Julius Francis, the former British and Commonwealth Heavyweight Champion, that, that, that told me this in 1999 when I was at Coliseum Nightclub. Remember Coliseum Nightclub? Hey, I remember Exposure. Oh, uh, come on, man. PSG. Come on, man. Twice PC. as nice. Yeah. Yeah, right. So, them days, them, they were the days, trust me. Them were the days. Remember them days yeah. like... Gareth Skank. A, a, bottle of, a bottle of champagne and there was £50. Yeah. And we like eat it just to buy it. Alize. Yeah, I don't know. But we were stupid them times. Like, <laughs> trust me. You know what I mean? Making them man rich while we were getting poor looking, looking to shine and look rich. Right? But... Um, and Julius Francis, them times there's a big queue outside, and Julius just rocked up. He's British and great champion at the time. And Julius Rasmus come in, and like, cause I never queued anyway. I'll find a way to sleep. And boom, we're in there. We're talking. We're talking about adversities and everything. And I remember, I remember uh, him saying to me, Julius saying to me that, right, even Lennox Lewis being knocked down his spine. And the reason why I didn't question it is because he was in the camp, because he was managed by Frank Malone at the time, and so was Lennox Lewis. So I'm saying, well, maybe there's something going on there. I don't know. But Lennox hit this fake news. But what I am saying, let us lose feels that I was what I said when I'm saying that. I'm saying like, so what? It doesn't matter because I guarantee those guys who knocked him down in spine, and most probably this is no addition to laborers, but most of some laboring job right now. Let us lose is living in a fifty million pound mansion in Jamaica. So hey ho, what does it matter? We do not have box rec and on box rec. They don't have your professional career and they don't have your spot hat. Who you, they have this professional career, but they don't have uh, your wins and losses in sparring. So therefore, <laughs> I'm not. You know what I mean it doesn't matter. That's a, that's my mind. I say. Are we, start, plus, are we starting some business ideas? Is it maybe, 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 maybe we could do that. You know, we yeah. go talk to Spar Bob record. Right? Yeah, but how are we going to adjudicate? Right? If that was the case, I'd be the king of sparring, bro. I was the world champion <laughs> sparer. Right? So it don't, it don't. To, seriously, on the rules, it doesn't matter. Just got to be real. It don't matter. So what? Hey, February twenty second. Just to conclude, the the most anticipated. Well, one of the most anticipated rematches. In recent history, Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder. Tyson Fury has said this time round his preparation is different. He is masturbating seven times a day on <laughs> Diet Coke. Okay. Okay. Is it going to help him to avoid that right hand? I, I, I don't know about none of them kind of tricks there, right? But what I am saying <laughs> is like, like I said before, Tyson Fury is actually a fighting man, right? And if you know anything about travelers, I grew up with travelers, you know what I mean? Who would have called it? Remember, like, I'm just going to tell it how it is, right? Travelers are the only set of people that I've known in my life that are not scared of no one. No one. Do you get what I'm trying to say to you? Sometimes you can be around um, certain, like, certain guys who go into certain environments, like, you get certain white guys who come into to, to, to a black environment, yeah? Or be down in a bricks or boxing gym and feel edgy and feel a bit uncomfortable because it's not their environment, right? 
travelers don't give a f right they're not black they're not white they're not they're not you know what I mean they're not affiliated they they are affiliated to the fact that they are they're travelers you know what I mean and as Tyson Fury says he's king of the gypsies so they have that fearlessness they just don't give a flying f that's how they roll you know what I mean so him going in from facing um, Deontay Wilder the second time, he knows a punch of that he's going to be facing. But then also Deontay Wilder, and I was like, right, you know what, I didn't even lick you properly. And you went down. So, and and now, what you've seen is Deontay Wilder has perfected to throw the straight right hand. Mm -hmm. Just go watch. You don't, you don't believe me? The, the Dominic Brazil knockout, straight right hand. You know what I mean? When he clapped that... that the old man is so old, if he costs, you get asbestos because he's so blinking old in Lewis Ortiz. He's perfected to throw that right hand. And the thing about it is, is he knows he's got it now. So he's got a kind of air of arrogance to him where he can say, I can just sit back and just wait to throw it. What do you say he only needs two seconds? Oh, that's, all, that's the truth, though. You know, if you could, that is the truth. That's all he needs. Two seconds, if he claps you, you're gone. But the thing about it is this, what makes this fight so intriguing is... Tyson Fury knows what he's got to do in this fight here. And I watched the fight that's the other day, and it was a very good mm. fight, right? And when I watched it the second time around, well, the 20th time now, but this, right? After all the hype has died out, yeah? When I watch it now, it was a close, it was a closer fight. I still thought Tyson Fury won the fight, but it was a closer fight. But you have to realize this now, maybe, um, Maybe Deontay Wilder did underestimate Tyson Fury, thinking I'm just gonna go smash you because I know there would be other ways for him to try and get other fights. But it's gonna be a great fight. It's going to be an absolutely great fight. And seriously, for this fight here, boxing has won. Swear that. That's knowledge. I'm trying. And that's master knowledge, right? I'm trying. I'm trying. Hey, let's like find the man himself. But for uh, allow me through the gates of South London <laughs> to enjoy some soul food, sorrel, and all that. Yeah, man. Listen, man, Pro Bees, you've been a big support from day dot. So, like, when I'm seeing all, like, these little puppies, I'm like, a, it's mad, like, everyone's looking at me like this older senior statesman. But I'm seeing so many guys come through on certain platforms, right? So many guys who, who, who I've always encouraged, and they're saying, yes, but you kind of set the way for us. That's mad. When I hear that, that, it does, it makes me blush, but you can't see it. But it does, it makes me blush. But I'm just very, very grateful for the platform that I have. And I'm so, so grateful to MTK Global because MTK Global are taking over the whole world. And if you ain't on board, you better get on board. Hey, Pep Talk UK signing out. Remember, subscribe to the fight, it's right. Subscribe to Pep Talk UK. Leave a comment, likes and all. Pro Bees, keep it locked. 2020. Thank you.